Welcome back, Diane. It's been a while and so much has happened since we last uh, connected. Indeed. So what have you been tuning into? Because now the situation is, is quite different from a month ago. We have a different uh, candidate on the Democratic side. Right. And we also uh, have the J.D. Vance phenomenon, which we hadn't talked about before. So what have you been tuning into in your in your readings and in your, you know, your intuitive work? Uh, how do you see this so, thing going? So much. So first of all, you know, I don't think we totally got it wrong with the debate. You know, I think I, I think you are correct because we were talking behind the scenes, everybody, that, you know, Biden did orchestrate this in some way, in some like, like maybe divine way. So there was some kind of divine intervention that allowed for Kamala to come in. And, you know, now all of a sudden people are donating like crazy. The young people are excited. So it's like there's this new like um, reinvigoration behind this, this new this new movement. So, you know, I think there were some positives, even though I don't love how he was treated. Uh, I think there were some positives, you know, from that. So, yes, yeah, so I promised my viewers I would talk to an astrologer because I've done some remote viewing, I have done my cards, and I'm seeing some really crazy, confusing things. So I did a remote viewing um, on 45. And what I saw was him clutching his chest, and this is before the election, falling down, and the powers that be with the Republican Party then had to make a choice, and they had two paths in front of them. One was either they keep it a secret and they make him the picture of health, he has feminine vigor, and they're going to have to go forward with him, or they're going to use it as an opportunity to say he's on death's door, get rid of him. I also think there's a really good chance of Vance. I know the days are, you know, you know, the clock's ticking, right? Um, there's not too many days left. So I think there could be an actual change with 45 being the candidate. My cards are very mixed. Um, I don't feel strongly that he's going to be there. And I don't feel strongly that Vance is going to be there come November 4th or 5th, rather. Both. Wow. Yeah, I don't even know how they, I, I have no idea what would be done. It There must be some way, you know, that the rules uh, provide for something like that. It is true, though, that there have been shocks already, as we've seen. Right. The, the debate itself was a major shock, even though perhaps we should have expected it more. Certainly the, the assassination attempt is a major shock. And then the fact that Biden, uh, you know, uh, stops his candidacy and Kamala Kassim starts three in a row. Right. And uh, yes, uh, Trump basically in his chart there is the distinct possibility he's been writing this thing for a long time connected to right. his health. Yes, absolutely. So it's totally possible. It's interesting that the, you know, the British astrologer, which by the way, this British guy, he pretty much the way he's explained it is approximately how I see the charts. Cause sometimes with astrologers, you'll, you'll start looking and I see this on my channel a lot. They'll say, well, this astrologer says this, this astrologer says mm -hmm. that. I, I get and that too. There, there are a lot of, uh, readings that are anything from incoherent to at least puzzling. Whereas yeah. when I when I hear uh, Steve Judd describe the chart, that's the astrology that I understand. As for example, okay. he says he says clearly, this is totally true, that the uh, coming up in the convention that there's a full moon uh, as the convention starts, and the Uranus energy oh. because he's talking oh, about the, DNC, how Uranus, the DNC right. The DNC, the, the yes. Convention be, so that is on the 19th. So that's what, 18 days away. That's not too far away. But the point being, okay. that convention features a major full moon that is triggering the Uranus in the sky, right? And so okay. uh, th this would be considered, well, something might happen, some unexpected thing. But he says clearly, which is true, it is not to Kamala's harm. It is to her benefit because that full moon aligns really well with her planet. Yes. However, when it comes to Trump, that's cutting across his ascendant, his, his horizon line. And that is a lot more risky because you're triggering the okay. Uranus in a much more dangerous way. So yes, uh, the, the way the situation is, that could definitely happen, right? But then if you say, well, let's say it doesn't happen. Let's say this guy mm -hmm. makes it all the way to November. Mm -hmm. 
And he no. may. He may, but the answer is no, no. From my perspective, what I've always thought is, doesn't matter who you run. His chart is the chart of a loser. He's not going to win in November, right. the way his chart is. You know, basically full stop. And of course, people will then say, well, what if Trump doesn't run and someone else comes in? Of course, then you'd have to look at that chart. Right. Possibly, right? Possibly. But then you could go into the political realm to say that no matter who you put there, they have some serious problems with women, especially. It is very difficult to argue the case because they've put themselves behind the eight ball by the things they've done, right? And now they can say all they like about, no, 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 it isn't really that much. No, yes, it is. You guys want to take away women's rights. This is not going right. to work for you, right? So, but right. certainly with the people we have right now, you know, Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. No, I mean, I always said that Kamala would be a great asset to Biden. Well, what do you think? Her chart changes running by herself? It's even right, better. Right, right. <laughs> no, right. it's even better. Yeah, her cards are great. I mean, that's the thing. I, I don't really even need to pull them because every time I do that, her, her cards are good. Uh, no matter, like, I think, because at this point, I'm just looking at her winning or losing. Mm -hmm. I'm not even looking at the Republican Party so much because I feel like there's change and whatnot. But I'm tuning into something that you said about the... Um, the the moon and the rnc I, i'm sorry the dnc because i didn't feel much going on around the rnc like that didn't feel i didn't really feel much of anything psychically like i just felt like it was the rnc and that it was going to happen the dnc i feel like outside of it um lots of like protesters lots like i'm getting like lots of anger um and I don't know if this is a metaphor that I'm seeing or literal, but like fire, like people getting like really angry, like those angry protesters, which, you know, I think sometimes are, are actually just kind of like bought and paid for. And, you know, they're just there to like cause trouble, um, which could be to Carla's benefit because she's safe inside and she can say, look, this is who we're trying to get rid of. This is who we're trying to beat. This is the, the rhetoric that we're trying to overcome. Mm -hmm. So that actually would be to her benefit. But I am kind of feeling like a raucous energy around the DNC that I wasn't feeling with the RNC. So it's interesting how you're talking about Uranus, the full moon. Mm -hmm. So lots of like planetary astrological energy mm -hmm. on that, that time frame. So right. yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I would say to anyone, you know, that's going, just be careful, be observant. Um, there are people that have agendas out there that are harmful. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's totally true. I mean, that, that the energy has a, an instability about it. That's basically the ABCs of astrology. Yeah. Whenever Uranus is around, Arts. yeah, it, it's, it's the unexpected. And so in a way, trying to predict the unexpected, well, then that's the whole point is that it's, that it's right. unexpected, right? But we already saw some of it. You know, it's a it's a full year. The the Uranus is there the whole time. You know, and and by the way, probably the key thing is that it's linked to the U.S. chart as well because it's one thing to say because oh. uh, they uh, it's, it's, are they candidates separately or together, which they are in this case. They're both linked, but much more right. like Trump in terms of being a problem. But uh, the U.S. the U.S. Moon is getting that that. Uh, it's. Look at the very first card that I pull when I look at the DNC. It's literally mm. the moon card. Yeah. So, you know, and that also means too, like, things aren't quite clear around that time, right? Mm. The moon card's about, like, disillusionment and deceit and, you know, things happening in the dark. And so, yeah, I was getting something kind of, like, nefarious. Um, the obstacle, people doing something, people actually taking some sort of action. Um, page of Swords here. Uh, and also too, you know, where it's swords that, you know, for me, a lot of times swords does have to do with politics. This is my card for Kamala. So interesting. She always comes up for me as the queen of wands. So that tells me, okay, yep, she's, she's there. She's fine. You know, I don't worry about her safety. She's going to have a lot of success, I think, from this. You know, mm. four of wands, the card of like um, success reaching your goals, reaching your milestones, that kind of thing. Um, hmm, three of wands. Yeah, that makes me feel like people are going there. Uh, see, because I am getting something like that's more nefarious. And, and I think the moon is sort of talking about that. There are people going there that has like really poor intent. So 
you know, like, I think she's fine. I don't like, I don't want people to worry about her safety. I, I think she's fine. And, and I actually think it might be to her benefit because it's going to prove her example of what she's been trying to say. Like this rhetoric, this anger, this hatred isn't okay. Mm-hmm. We're better than this. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So looking at Vance, because um, I think there's only so many days left that he can be replaced. So right? they say, so, yeah, that it's in the last week. And I, right? I don't know how that works as far as the limitations, the rules. Uh, Me the neither. One th- I mean, the one thing with him is that it's pretty clear that at minimum, he became a problem for, for them in the mainstream media, which is the media they say is fake anyway, you know, in their own uh, bubble. They're totally but happy. His own, book, his own book is, I mean, his own words is problematic. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. yes, I get that they pulled the first edition, so you can't see some of the really weird stuff. But when Kamala was saying, you know, like these people are weird, like that's kind of like her new slogan, you can't disagree with her. <laughs> no, no, it's true. It's totally true. And, and, and uh, once again, in a year when women's issues are are uppermost in people's minds, the last thing you need is a person that is making comments about women and women's rights. It's just a really bad look, you know, and, and uh, what it threatens in a, in a practical sense is that uh, in the suburbs, especially, which was Trump's, uh, Trump's Achilles heel, you know, his kryptonite in 2020 right. was suburban white women basically voted against him. And when you're seeing these kinds of comments, you realize this is the way these people think. You know, they, this idea that only if you have children, otherwise you could be a sociopath. Really? That that's that's pretty I mean, extreme. I mean, childless. I mean, my last video, like I, I had the shirt, the childless cat lady. You know, this childless cat lady is voting for Kamala, and I had the little yeah. paw up. And you know, my cat's been making her campaign posters. If you guys, you know, check out my community tab. It's it's hilarious. But it's so offensive to think because I chose a path of getting an education and having a career and wanting to travel that I'm a sociopath. Like, so if, so even if like, say he had my vote at one point, that would make me do an about face and say what? So my whole life is worthless because I didn't breed children for you. Like there is like, no, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's insulting. uh, I mean, it's an approach. I know that there are people in this country that think this way, but you know, it, it, politics sure. is a matter of numbers. You've got to add up your numbers yes. and right. do something that solidifies your position with the people that think that way, but there are more people that think something different. You're going to get yeah. in trouble. It's that simple, you know? So, and there's a lot of us, you know, because I've been like making some funny posts on my channel about it. And I'll tell you, I have thousands of women that's like, and men, men saying, well, I have a childless cat dad. I have a childless, you know, dog dad. Yeah. So yeah. it's sort of like, you know, reached across, you know, to both genders. Um, mm-hmm. And, and so people are like, I don't even have a pet, but I don't have children. I don't, I never want to children. I'm not a sociopath. Like, so it's very insulting. When I look at his cards, it's interesting. You know, I think he does talk a good game, Page of Cups. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you look at what's in that cup, it's a stinky fish. And that's basically what Vance is offering us. He is offering us the proverbial stinky fish. Right. And his obstacle, you know, five of swords, the card of a ruthless battle, a card of a fight. So he's fighting to stay on. So the fact that he is fighting to stay tells me that they are talking about this behind the mm-hmm. scenes. Mm-hmm. He's trying. He is trying. He like, you know, he is there. He's, you know, waving his sword like, I I want this. I want this. I want this. And they're trying to make the decision, Seven of Cups. But are they making the decision from a place that's grounded? Because there's nothing grounded about the Seven of Cups. The things inside of the cups are like fairies, castles, baubles, ghosts. I mean, you know, so how grounded is the Republican Party as they're doing this? And no matter what, four swords because this is a card of pulling back withdrawal retreat no matter what happens i think we're going to be hearing a lot less from him like somebody has said stop talking mm-hmm. you know i think at the very very least they said you know be quiet zip it which i we talked we mentioned before we started the video which is what we've been talking about with uh 45 that he 
the powers that be that are trying to control him are finding that they can't control this man that is demented and not well. And that interview that he gave with the, the Black women journalists uh, yesterday, I only saw a piece of it, but I mean, they had to end it. They had, you know, his people ended it. Mm -hmm. uh, that did not go as planned. I mean, some horrible one-liners came out of that. I don't know what anybody was thinking on his side, putting him in that scenario. I mean, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist or a psychic to figure out like that wouldn't have gone well. Um, he has no respect for women. He has no respect for people of color. You know, it went exactly how anybody would have expected it to have gone. Right, but then you disaster. also, I mean, he did, the thing about it is that it sounds like he wanted to say what he said. He he came in there looking for a fight and he's doing the same thing he was doing in 2016 and even in 2012. He's going to the racist lines, you know, I mean, saying something like, well, no, she used to be Indian and now she's black. I mean, you're, you're going straight to this identity, racial politics. And I think he thinks that this works. I mean, it certainly is what his base thinks, you know, the people in his base that are really, really committed MAGA people. Mm -hmm. That's true, but that's not what the majority thinks overall. And you're always right, you know, so you're really inciting in a, in a, in a huge way. But that's the way yeah. Trump is. Trump doesn't have knowledge of policies. He does. He never argues about the fine points of anything. It's just no. in the gutter type of energy where look what you're going to do if you elect this woman, you know. Uh, right. That is also and on top of that, uh, a woman of color. I mean, this is like the ultimate insult to his people. I get it. It's the ultimate insult, but you're trying to win the election with all the people. You know, it's not, not only your people. Exactly. Vote. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and <clears> I think uh, the last time I looked at the statistics for this country, it's only about half Caucasian now. So yeah, well, he's alienating like half of the country, but then half of that Caucasian group is women. Mm -hmm. So, but then you also have, so now he's down to 25% and that with that 25%, well, now you have also educated, compassionate, caring white men. Yeah, That's not going to fall for this. And, yeah. you know, and I just feel like he's becoming more and more unhinged. I do um, subscribe to his email, his newsletters to, to see what he's saying. Um, it, it's, it's, um, bizarrely fascinating. So the last one that I got, because they, they insert your name and in, into it. So it's like very personal to you. So it was like, you know, dear Diane, I'm canceling all my plans just to be with you. Will you go out with me? You know, I forget what night. And it was like, he was asking me out on a date. It was the creepiest thing, but this is what he's sending out to the masses. And it's like, wait, this is so unhinged, but it also left me with the impression he doesn't want to do interviews. He doesn't want to do debates. We already know that he's trying to, you know, wiggle and worm his way out of September 10th debate with um, Kamala. Like, I'm canceling all my plans, you know, and I'm just going to try to do one-to-ones with people because I think he's failing when he's working with groups. It's not working. Mm -hmm. His old style is failing. And because he can't learn new skills, what does he do, right? I mean, what someone like him do? He's falling yeah. back on what he's always done, but yeah. now it's not working. Yeah, no, exactly. And I mean, he knows very well, and this is the irony, he knows very, very well that if he steps into a debate with Kamala, he's debating a prosecutor. He's seen her debating, well, not debating, questioning people like Brett Kavanaugh and William Barr, who are you know, whatever you want to think about them, they're both, you know, pretty accomplished, competent men, and they were really in trouble with her. Yeah. I mean, the way she was quite, so what do you think is going to happen in a situation where, you know, she's on her feet and we'll pick up on whatever you're saying and we'll, we'll ask questions and we'll say things. So that's why he doesn't want to debate her. Right. And, right. but he might have to, you know, if he continues to, you know, remain the candidate, let's say that nothing happens and we get to, to September, it's distinctly possible that the polls are looking even worse. They've already started to shift. They can oh shift more coming yes. out of that convention. And then he may have no choice but to get into the debate because it'll just look like it's it's beginning to you know get really bad. So overall, it's just not a good scene. It's not a good scene for this guy, you know? 
No, and, and I I just don't see his path forward because let's say somehow magically he can debate her and magically more people start seeing his way and all of that. He still has all these legal issues. So you're talking about someone that's not allowed to own a gun, but would be the commander in chief of the biggest military in the world. How does that work? The guy can't have a liquor license even. Um, well, I mean, look, if, I, if if you were to get elected, though, the thing about the danger to this is that if he gets elected, all of that goes away. He can pretty much control. Well, yeah. it, right. It's really, really hard. I mean, the, 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 this is the whole point of that crazy ruling the Supreme Court uh, put out a while back, is that you're right. granting the president, you know, godlike powers. So the main thing is that he wouldn't get there, right? But see, this is the other thing as well, right? He has to count on the judge, Judge Marchand, in September, September mm -hmm. 6th, right? So September 6th, the judge is supposed to decide whether or not he's going to sentence him, right? September 6th. I looked at those two dates, September 6th, September 18th. Neither is any good. They're both rough dates oh. for him. So oh, me... he has to count on the judge saying, I'm not going to do this, which I suppose is possible. See, the thing about the thing about Trump is that he has the, the saving grace or the thing that is keeping him afloat is Jupiter in his sign, right? Jupiter is in his sign. But this is also what astrologers use to then conclude because Jupiter in his sign, that's enough to get over the finish line and win. Well, the main problem that he has is Kamala also has a really strong Jupiter at election time as well. So and I mean really strong, very similar, mm. better really, because Kamala's Jupiter is the Jupiter that Bill Clinton had in 92 and Barack Obama oh. had in 08. This is a very, very dangerous situation when someone's ascendant is being lit up by a planet like Jupiter. Right. And the thing is, the rest of her chart ha doesn't have anywhere near the problems that his does. So basically his is like, okay, there's the Jupiter and everything else is a problem. But, and by the way, his Jupiter, is the reason he's in the jam he's in because he's always doing this with Jupiter, overconfidence. Jupiter is the expansion energy. So he thought he uh, had it in the bag. Right. He was sure this is over, I've got it. Then the shock comes in and all of a sudden, yeah. it's not as easy anymore. In fact, it's looking pretty grim because all the, right. you know, all the, the, all the factors are pointing the other way. So exactly. Yeah, this is this is not a good situation. Bottom line, you know. Yeah. So I pulled some cards for his September to see like what would happen with his legal case. You know, here he is desperately trying to go to smoother waters. So he does not feel good about September. He's not walking into this feeling confidently. So because, you know, sometimes when you look at tarot, you can kind of see what the other person knows that they're not saying. Mm. But, you know, so what he's kind of um, feeling internally is, oh my God, I want to get out of this. I, I want to like paddle my little boat and just get out. Um, I don't want to deal with this. His obstacle, and I get this for him all the time, and I know the fool can have much deeper meanings, but when it comes to 45, I take it at face value. His obstacle is that he acted foolishly. Yeah, and idiot. it's coming to a head. I mean, the thing is, he is the king of delay. And you can only delay this for so long. Things eventually culminate and come to an end. Um, this is one of my cards for him. One of my, you know, one of the better cards, you know, that I have for him. Because there was a point in his life where he did have that King of Wands energy, where he actually did have some success at business before he started losing every single business and, you know, going bankrupt and whatnot. But the other thing, too, with the King of Wands is that that tells me because out of all the kings, this is the king that's the most passionate, the most, like, the one that's really going to fight. He has a lot of enthusiasm. And you think about it, you know, Kamala is running for president. 45 is running for his life. Mm -hmm. He's running for his freedom, his money, you know, to not be put in jail. He he has to have, like, this enthusiasm that, mm -hmm. uh, and his cronies, everybody that he knows, everyone that he cares about. I don't know how much he really cares about people, but at least those people he talks to, um, they're all in jeopardy if he doesn't win. And I am not seeing him winning. So he's going to come out with, I think, a lot of strong energy. But then I get the card of sickness, you know? And so it's interesting how I get for both him and Ben, the card of pulling back, withdrawal, retreating. It can be the card of sickness. 
So it's like he wants to be the king of wands, but he somehow just can't be. And here he is, you know, and I get the hermit for him a lot. Once again, I know some of the traditional meanings of the hermit has to do more with like learning and education and that sort of thing. But it can also mean literally being a hermit, being by yourself, not getting that support, not having, you know, those people around him that he's used to having around him, rallying around him, supporting him. And he's like left out in the dark. Here he is, you know, it's it's interesting how when we start talking about the Republican Party, we're getting the moon a lot, which I don't like because the moon does talk about lies, deceit, deception, disillusionment, being kind of sneaky, doing things in the dark of night. You know, it's very much opposite of the sun card, which brings things into light. And so I really do feel like he and the Republican Party are kind of like plotting and planning behind the scenes in a nefarious way. I mean, all parties plot and plan right behind the scenes. They come up with strategies. But I just feel like they're doing things that are nefarious, things that are not for the highest good. And, you know, the more I do the readings, the more they're becoming more and more consistent with us. So his September looks pretty miserable. And he is going into it. Um, he starts off feeling empowered. But then something happens this month. This is August 1st, right? Um, something happens this month that really just kind of deflates him. So he goes into September, no more the King of Wands. And now we're the fool, we're the hermit. And it's a total energy shift where he's like deflated. Yeah. And so I think that gives us a really good behind the scenes look of what's to come and his state of mind, you know, what he's about to go through. So I, I you know, I in general, you know, and I try to be sensitive because he is a human being. Um, I don't really feel good about him in terms of his health and his well-being. Uh, you know, and I just keep getting that. Like, and the thing is, and this is one of the most frustrating things about being a psychic, you don't always know. Um, like, you don't, let me turn it off. Um, you don't always get validation because things get hidden. So like when I did that remote viewing, we may never know that he had that heart attack hmm. and that, you know, they hid it. But also too, I don't know if we've ever replaced a president at the last minute. Um, you mean a our candidate. presidential candidate, a candidate, I should say, right. I'm sorry, a candidate. Yeah, let me be specific. Um, a <laughs> candidate. And, yeah, right. Oh my God. Imagine those emails. Um, yeah, a candidate at the last minute. And I don't even know. But since I'll tell you, having him being the former president and running again has made us learn so much about civics, things that we didn't cover in school. Mm -hmm. uh, because like, I don't know the policies on, okay, well, all right, how many days do we have to change Vance? And what happens if 45 does get dropped out? And, you know, we, we've never seen these things. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're living in unprecedented times. Yeah, yeah. No, and, uh, you know, it's curious that you bring up the moon repeatedly because this is actually the fine point. If you, if you look at his chart, the key thing that happens is that Jupiter, which is the planet, that he's writing, you know, by, by basically on one level being overconfident, but, you know, separately, it's a planet that is very strong in his birth chart. He's always had a tremendous lucky streak. The thing is that Jupiter is moving toward in October. By October, what it does is it stations, it stops. And it directly at that point, yes, it's getting close to his sun, but it's directly opposite his moon. This is the key thing, mm. right? That there's a mm. fine distinction there. When you take a planet like Jupiter and you put it opposite the moon in a station, it's challenging that moon. It's actually dangerous because his moon rules a health house. So there you have a potential problem. It's oh. also the, the moon in his chart is in his election house. Jupiter opposing it isn't good. The moon ruling the 12th suggests loss, not win. This is a fine point that I think astrologers just run over. Many astrologers go, no, 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 Jupiter is near a sun. Right. That's enough, right? So no, it's not enough. Part there like that is a major, major problem, both to his health and well-being, as well as to his election prospects, right? And this, I think, is important right. to, to stress. I mean, I know in the cards, from a different perspective, but you're getting it as there's lots of moon in there, right? <laughs> so Right, like literally. Yeah, Which yeah. Is... And, and I noticed also totally separate measurement, but something in astrology people may have heard about progressions. 
his progressed moon situation on election night, it's like this, thumbs down. I know that ah. progression. No, it's a no among six or seven other factors that I know about his chart on election night that are not right. good at all. They're just not good, right? So This is why I love pairing up with knowledgeable astrologers because I can get my psychic and tarot stuff lined up, but it's nice mm -hmm. when you get that validation, mm -hmm. you know, with what's going on in the heavens. Um, and the other thing too, that I have to mention, because I have some people <clears throat> writing to me and putting in comments, you know, well, this astrologer said 45 is going to win. So I go, I check it out. And I, this is what I check out. I don't check out their prediction. You already told me that, you know, they said he won. I check out what their prediction was the last time. And every single one that people are telling me that they're so worried about, they've been wrong with mm -hmm. the last election. Yeah. Yeah. So well, why are we getting so up, like worked up about people that have been consistently wrong? Like, I, I don't get it. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, it's, the it's thing is, bait. it is. And it, the thing about it is, is that from the vantage point of an astrologer, I mean, you try to listen to like, what is the logic? I mean, the word logic is inside the word astrology. There, there has to be a logic mm -hmm. to what you're saying. And depending on which astrologer I'm watching, I'll see typically you see a blend, you know, because I remember in 2020, read, watching a, a description by a Trumper astrologer, he was totally in the tank for Trump. And he was saying all kinds of things that were correct until the key moment where he just skipped over the aspect that was going to basically doom him. He just ignored that. Right. He put a, a, a spin on it that I thought, that's just crazy. What you're saying is completely crazy. Uh, the way he interpreted it, right? Which I would have said, right. no, that, that's that's the aspect that is pointing to his loss, right? So you see this quite a bit, that an astrologer will say certain things that do make sense. Like it is true that Jupiter is in a sign, but Jupiter being in your sign, you know, it's fame and it's infamy, it's notoriety. It's not always, Jupiter doesn't always just hand it to you, especially when your opponent now happens to have a lot of Jupiter as well, which interestingly, mm. Biden there didn't have the same help that uh, Kamala ah, has. So it's starting to look like almost like a divine intervention that, you know, on cue, by the way, getting. the fascinating thing about this was that Kamala came on the scene on the Eris station. That happens twice a year. Right on that day, she comes on the scene. Eris is a woman, a warrioress, right? She's the one ah. that took over. And, and you see this in the U.S. chart as well, that Eris is very, very strong right now in the U.S. chart, strongly suggesting, you know, the presence of a woman there she is, right? This is the last right. thing you want to hear. If you're Trump, well, of course, he doesn't know the astrology, so I'm, t I'm speaking from the astrology perspective, but it's, it's right. the last thing you'd want to see because, and by the way, in his chart, Eris is a huge problem. It's been a huge problem for a long time. That's why Eugene Carroll, women judges, women prosecutors, women have been after him in a major way. Well, it continues now. Now it's the opponent, you know? So, right. you know, it's just not a good scene. It's not a good scene at all. You know, it's interesting that you say like Trump doesn't know the astrology, but I'm going to say the powers that be in the Republican Party, the the one that really yeah, calls the do. shot. Sure. I think I've always said, you know, for both both sides, there are certain astrologers, psychics, remote viewers that they do listen to. They do pay attention to this stuff. And mm -hmm. uh and I think they do factor some of this in. You know, I don't think it's all just black and white and just simply poll numbers. I think they do look at that and, and because it's so often correct. And it's one more tool that they use. I don't think it's the only tool, but I think it's yeah. one of the tools that they use. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I, no, I mean, nothing would surprise me. I mean, it's just like, like if there's a special branch of the CIA or something that tracks yeah. the things people say. Yeah. I mean, it's entirely possible, right? but, but uh, that that I, I think that they would necessarily act on it. I don't know about that because, you know, the way they were caught uh, by surprise with the way it worked. I mean, in a way you think about it and you think, okay, so he actually accomplished what needed to be done by, not that he said anything uh, good in the debate, he basically spoke nonsense, but the fact that he spoke, he spoke quickly, Trump's, Trump's superpower is he's a congruent liar. He's the type of person that congruently looks at you and tells you the floor is the ceiling, the ceiling is the floor, and he moves his hands around and he says it with total conviction. Right. 
He it's does that really confident. well. Yeah. Right. So that conveys confidence to people because that's what con men are. Con men are sure of themselves, right? So through doing what he did, he created a major contrast with Biden, who, you know, let's be fair, Biden is no longer at his best in terms of communication. He may have sure. all his faculties around being president, right. but the problem is that in, in politics, communicating smoothly, communicating congruently is really important. He can't do that anymore. So sure. he gets rid of Biden because this causes tremendous pressure on Biden to leave. Then he brings in Kamala. He accomplished it. It's perfect. He caused his own demise, so to speak, right? Yes. And, and he was flat-footed. He was not expecting it because if he had been expecting it, he would have been ready with something and he wasn't, right? So. Right. And, and I think that's also part of what I've been seeing that, you know, the, the Republicans that's kind of trying to control him, they just can't control him anymore because like they're seeing, I think, reality and they can't make him see reality. They can't make him see like, look, you can't say this. You can't do this because if you do this, then this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And he he's like a one trick pony. Yes. He, he's definitely. not able to learn the new skills. He's not agile. He's not able to adapt to um, this very ever-changing you know political scene that he is now a part of especially if he wants to actually be president he's not able to make the adjustments and level up to where kamala is um even as a con man he's not able to level up anymore he's he's peaked at, at that point um he i don't think he's able to learn new skills uh at this point so i think what we're seeing is what we're getting you know yeah. Yeah, no, no more surprises get, with him. Yeah, and the thing is, this is the other thing too. When you're in a in, a, in an astrology situation with a lot of planets literally harassing you in major ways, he has that. Mm -hmm. Then you throw Jupiter in there. You throw Jupiter in the mix. Jupiter has the confident, expansive energy. With this guy, it goes all into expansion that is too expansive, meaning overconfidence, overdoing right. it you know, exaggerating, lying even more, which, you know, it can help somewhat, but it, it's not really going to solve your problem. It's not. It's just going to draw you right. in into more trouble, right? So it's not, in that sense, it's not a helpful thing. In fact, if you were looking at the chart of a, let's call them an ordinary person with a similar pattern, they might feel really besieged by something in their life that is not working well. So then they make a move, like you were telling me before we, you know, we were talking about how people get conned uh, in, mm. in, in scams where they, they decide, yeah. oh, my finances aren't the way I want, so I'm going to go into this scam because I'll get rich quick. No, you won't. You'll just get totally right. fleeced. And now you have an even bigger problem than before. That's the thing with Jupiter where you have to be very careful when it's yeah. uh, the way it is for him. Yeah. So let me, there was one more question I wanted to ask you. So when I have been doing readings on November 5th and 6th, <clears throat> Typically, when I look at any election through the years, um, it's pretty black and white because the questions that I'm asking are basically on November 5th, is the election indeed going to happen? On November 6th, will we pretty much know who won? I know there's mail-in ballots and things like that. I get that. But typically, you know on the next day who won. I, I mean, I usually have a very good sense by the time I've gone to bed if my prediction was correct or not. And... Um, I'm sort of feeling like a lot of disruption on November 5th on election day that grows into the next day where like I'm not getting the black and white cards that I am used to seeing with an election. So I'm wondering, is, is there something astrologically that is chaotic, confusing? Is there something there that would explain what I'm seeing? Yeah, there there's enough. Uh, first of all, the Uranus energy, you know, a planet like Uranus doesn't just do something in a certain month and maybe in another month it, it's a, the whole year like uranus doesn't clear until next year so the the notion oh. of, of uh, unexpected also rebellious energy in the air so in other words whether or not trump is there on election night almost certainly the republican party is now totally trumpified they probably would contest the election no matter what i mean i don't see how Right. This uh, goes any other way. In fact, I even heard that one of their strategies would be, although it seems completely wackadoodle to me, but something about how you could have 
uh, lots of counties in Pennsylvania, you know, the, the key states saw that. where they would be refusing to certify. But then you'd think, well, wait a second. You mean you guys won? So your votes, Trump voted more, uh, more people voted for Trump in your county, but you don't want to certify. That seems like a bit of a problem. Now, if they were not going to yeah. certify, if they don't want to certify in a place where Democrats won, that I could understand. But it doesn't sound like that because they're, they're, they're making these plans to try to refuse. So, yeah, I yeah. would be really, really amazed if we get to November 5th and 6th, whatever, and everything is settled. No, it's likely to extend. But okay. between there and, you know, succeeding and upending the whole thing, that I don't see. Do you see that? Do you get a sense that, you know, they would be able to, uh, you know, overturn me? Because this, this, the way they think now, these people think that it doesn't matter what the result is. We'll just create chaos oh, no. and, and, hmm. and try to win not on the not through the ballot but through some other means right no no i think they'll create chaos i still see kamala winning I, and i still her, I, I still see her actually becoming president but i was almost wondering like on the fifth if there was going to and i i've had a lot of viewers ask me this question so i don't know if other astrologers are putting this out there um because there's nothing really in tarot that would um say anything about this but like something uh, like an electrical outage, um, some natural disaster, something that would prevent people from being able to go to the polls or they have or having the polls work. Because there yeah. seems like there's some kind of muddled, confused energy. But I'm wondering if that's just simply, you know, the Republicans are being nefarious and, you know, they're, they're just trying to duck and dodge the inevitable. I mean, you know, the main Kamala the, being president. The main thing happening astrologically on election night is that uh, Mars and Pluto oppose each other. Mars and Pluto opposing is the very definition of a battle or a, a, a ah. power struggle, a power struggle, right? So, okay. and, and, but the thing is that opposition is once again, because really what happens is Pluto is very, very late in Capricorn then, and mm -hmm. Mars is very, very late in Cancer. And then on election night, it flips into Leo, but that is actually harder on Trump. The way I read that, that suggests to me, Trump for that and other reasons, or if it isn't Trump, the Republican party, but I mean that here we're looking, this is the problem. We have so many moving parts that in right. one way, in one way we have to say, okay, <laughs> given that Uranus energy is so much in the air, we probably have to wait to really say, okay, well, what's going to happen election night? This will probably be much more clear in October, for example, because in October, sure. I mean, yeah. I feel like if Trump disappears from the scene, it's probably before that. I don't know. I mean, that's my, my sense that it would right. be pretty strange if, I mean, I guess anything is possible that, you know, they have to replace him like October 29th or something. I mean, anything is possible. No, but, I think September. You know, like, I just feel like, like somehow like the wind gets taken out of his sails in September. Well, then, you know, then, then, but so then, but depend, depends how it gets taken out though. Is it taken out well, where right. he can run or is it taken out where... He, you know, he is pushed back and then he's facing a, a, you know, a more sure loss type of thing. So there are a lot of moving parts we have to wait. But bottom line, in my opinion, when I look at his chart, this is not the chart of a winning candidate. It just isn't. Mm -hmm. I've always felt yeah. that, you know, in fact, but my thought was if Biden can show up with his head in a jar on November 5th, he would beat him. He would have but won. clearly the universe, you know, the universe had other plans. And it probably makes sense because I have to tell you that even though I'm thinking that it's a bit paradoxical, I was feeling, you know, kind of nervous about Joe because he was having so much trouble communicating. And I, and I kept thinking, uh, you know, this is what's happening in the polls, even though people say the polls don't tell you anything. No, a single poll doesn't, but many polls show many you trends. Polls. Which is why are you now surprised that we're seeing trends going toward Kamala? Right. That's what happens, right? You get a shift and people start- In a huge way. Right, they start thinking differently. So you can't follow a single poll, but when you have many polls, they tell you something. And uh, even people that say, oh, back in 2016, the polls were wrong. No, they weren't. If you remember uh, just before the election, before the voting, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. polls were tightening in the, because you know Hillary lost because of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. That's why she lost. And they were tightening tremendously at the end. But she won by the exact number that the national poll predicted. She won the popular vote.
by that amount, right? This is I the problem, right? I know, but that. that's the thing. If the, if, the, if the national poll says you're going to win, that doesn't mean you're going to win the election. It just means that you'll get more votes, which he did, but it wasn't enough because in the battleground states they were tightening. And this is the thing that the, the polls only show you the trend, but I mean, now you're seeing, for example, She's got a lead in in, in uh, Michigan. She's got a lead yes, in Wisconsin. a big lead. Exactly. So we're going to find out, but we need more time because with polls yeah. too, you need you need yes. to have multiple polls and a kind of a repeated pattern, right? So uh, I yeah. mean, she would have to do something hugely wrong, which I think would be so bizarre for her because I mean, she's so you know intelligent um you know she's calculated <clears throat> she's she she was a prosecutor right i mean she doesn't just do things on a whim um you know she's not like say 45 who's like a loose cannon you know i mean she's, no. she's calculated she has strategy she has plans she listens to advisors you know that sort of thing no you know um, and, and something else about kamala astrologically that is very interesting because i i wasn't uh, as focused on her like looking back and really trying to understand uh, her own, you know, transformations and this kind of thing. But right. uh, all I, my focus was basically, no, look at the the Jupiter under ascendant during the election year. My mm -hmm. thought was, this is a great person to have as a running mate because my mm -hmm. thought was, how is it possible that you get to election night and you have someone with Jupiter on the ascendant? How is that going to rebound to a loss to Biden? That made no sense to me. Well, now it makes even better sense right. that she's running. But here's the thing. In the two years before this, in 23 and 22, she's been under a great deal of uh, uh, Pluto. Pluto has been squaring her sun and moon. I know that aspect. I've lived through it. What it does is it totally ah. changes you and empowers you. The person that you were before is different from the person that emerges on the other side. I don't know what she did 100%. All I know is that right. her level of confidence today is much stronger than it used to be. And people have this idea of Kamala. They say, oh, well, in 2020, she lost an election, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, for one thing, she lost that election. But then what happens? Biden chose her immediately. He put her on the right. ticket immediately. So how did she really lose? It sounds to she me didn't. like a loss that turns into she a won. win. But in the interim, right. in between, this transformation took place. And this has empowered her a great deal. And so the person she is today is different. This is what astrology yes. would say. And I can tell you with confidence because I've lived through that aspect myself. And mm. it's not easy. You have to go through, you know, change, overcoming fears. It's not easy, right. but that it empowers you, you can take it to the bank, right? It's absolutely true. I love that. Yeah. So, am, I, yeah. am I right to feel concerned about Biden's health before the election? Uh, well, Biden does have health aspects. Yes, he does. And uh, I have to admit that I was underestimating that in the sense that, you know, you can always talk yourself out of something by by thinking, OK, he's generally a healthy guy. He's been healthy all his life. Right. And the, in astrology, the health house is also a the workhouse and the house of the people that work for you. And so, for okay. instance, particularly when you're younger, you're not going to necessarily have health patterns. You're more likely to complain about your workmates and things like that. But sure. I have to admit, I mean, once you, especially over 80, over 70, you know, then you bring in the natural feeling that, hey, this could be health. I mean, at minimum, let's call it his well-being or his, his health strength or his vitality has definitely become a problem. That's why he had to uh, yeah. you know, abdicate. That's the truth, right? So like I'm almost that, wondering like if he's going to be incapacitated or, you know, something like health wise will happen uh before the election and so and if he wasn't replaced with kamala then who like I, I don't think we've ever even had that happen right like where like there's a last minute replacement i think um, she i think she takes over immediately if something happens to right? his health she she becomes the she de facto over. president yeah and i would say there like during an election that was like but I mean, yeah so but i mean take over but then, then, then we have the election and it's like yeah, I, I mean, that would have been a mess. the main thing is there, this is where that there's a, the Uranus station is right at the end of August, early September. That's the key moment because that Uranus station is the, 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 uh, a pattern that roughs up his chart. And then there's a Pluto station as well, but that's later. My guess is that it's the Uranus. If something happens, especially if it's, if it has a shocking, oh my Lord, we weren't expecting this type of thing. That's the, the Uranian energy in the building, so to speak. 
Um, so yeah. So that so that Uranian energy is really just spreading out, you know, this whole time for everybody yes, in totally. every way. So we're yes. all sort of vulnerable to some of these. Because I've seen it like even like in my own personal life, like, oh wait, this happened. I didn't see that coming. Like mm -hmm. uh like yep. little surprises, not necessarily like horrible or anything, but just like, okay, wow, all right. Um that that's a change. Didn't see that person doing that or mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So like it's interesting how we're all affected, you know, we're all on the same planet, we're all in this together, we're all being affected together. Well, and that it turns out that in the US chart, uh, you see what happens is that uh, Kamala and all of them, Kamala, Biden, Trump, happen to have planets in that axis, which also if you think about it is normal in that if you're going to be a famous politician who enters a leadership role, you probably have connections to the American chart, right? That's going to be mm -hmm. logical. Otherwise, mm -hmm. how could you say that the, this is what happens, how people even have relationships right. with each other and so on. But in that sense, uh, to me, Kamala has a real edge around uh, profiting or gaining from the situation, right? Whereas Biden now, for obvious reasons, he's, you know, in the back burner, so to speak. And, right. uh, and Trump's is literally risky. You know the, the the way that that is. So, yeah. That's Interesting. Yeah, I know. You know, like the one, my my one final thought on all of this because I have so many people like writing to me, like they're panicked, they're worried, and you know what? I feel at peace. I feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, now in 2016, I knew um, 45 was going to win. I saw him going down that, you know, escalator. And I was like, you know, I don't want to be a part of this. I think we choose our own realities. I picked up and moved to Cambodia. Um, that was, you know, before, <laughs> way before the election. I was like, because, you know, I didn't want to be a part of that. And so I chose not to be a part of it for, for a lot of it. And so, um, I'm not getting that feeling. My bags are not packed. I, mm. I feel um, I, you know, I feel like, okay, we've got this. Yes, there's been some changes and I think we're going to see some more changes, but I think the changes are going to be for the better for, for Kamala. Well, you know, it, someone, someone sent me a, I don't know if it was a message. I don't know where I got it somewhere because I get all kinds of things, but the person said, oh, this person said that um, Kamala will not, something will happen to her and then they'll put in Newsom. Well, okay. First of all, I think that's highly unlikely, but here's the thing. Okay, here's yeah. the thing about that. If that were to happen, let's say crazy, say, I don't know what that situation would be, but here's Trump's problem. Here's the Republican Party's problem. If they put in Newsom, Newsom will win <laughs> because his chart is really, really strong. So it's really hard to get around this. You know, if they say that it happened, I mean, Newsom's chart is just painted at the moment. In fact, I think painted like positively. I think Newsom will be a great asset during the the two or three months before, like starting soon as a campaigner, that's probably the way it's going to be. But do not put him in there as the nominee for any reason, because then you really have a problem in terms of winning the election. And I don't mean because right. Newsom, I'm not getting into his politics. I don't care about that. I'm telling you about his chart. Right. His chart is yeah. primo, you know, with Jupiter in an uncomplicated way, which, by the way, usually means you won't be part of it, because what happens is whenever you're running, almost all, in fact, you see it in Kamala's too. Kamala has pressures in her chart. They're just not as nearly as bad as Trump's, but you always see a combination of something really good mm -hmm. with some pressure. That's what happens when you're running in an election because you have to take a lot of insults and things like that, which uh, Newsom doesn't have. But it, in the unlikely event, because this person was saying it in a panicked way, well, what if this could be really bad? No, relax, just relax because yeah, it's exactly. gonna turn out well. Because yeah. I think the bottom line is People aren't really voting for a particular candidate in this case. Mm -hmm. I think they're voting for human rights. They're voting human for rights. equality. I mean, Project 2025 is terrifying. Yes. You know, I, like, I make a joke that my cat is running for election. But if we put my Annie up there, as long as she runs as a Democrat, if she's the candidate, people are going to vote for her. Because people are voting for like their survival, their rights for their yeah. Medicare. The, mm -hmm. the, I mean, he wants to get rid of um, everything that we have for our veterans, our disabilities acts, you know, all of right. those sort of things. I mean, so people aren't really voting for, I think, you know, Kamala, 
for any Democrat in particular. I think they like her and I think she's good. And I think she'll be more than confident. But that's why I'm saying, I think you're right. They could have just stuck Biden in a jar and put him up there and people yeah. would have voted. Yes. Um, so I think all of us that made predictions, I think we were right in that. He, if, he, if he made it to election night, he would have won because mm -hmm. the issue isn't the candidate at this point. I mean, the, the Democrats would have to do something really wrong, you know, to put up like a really crazy candidate to make things go wrong. Right. The, people are really voting for our survival, our way of life. It's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is a, they're, it's so scary to read some of the things that they want to put forth. And, you know, and somebody wrote to me, well, you know, you don't know what you're talking about because, Trump didn't write that whole 2025 agenda. And I said, okay, but his name is mentioned 300 times in it. And it's written by the people that were around him. They were around him. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. enough yeah. said. And yeah. those things that they're proposing are in alignment with what he's saying. Yeah. And yeah. so I feel good about this. I, I am not losing any sleep. I know I have a lot of people writing to me. They feel nauseous. They're worried. They can't, you know, stop, take a breath. You know, there's more to life than politics. We can only, con we can only control so much, first of all. Focus on what you can control. Do something you enjoy. Eat well, get your sleep, that sort of thing. But I, you know, psychically, I feel good. I'm not packing my bags. I'm not going anywhere. Um, you know, do you get the same sensation? Same. Yeah, pretty much the yeah. same, same. All right, well, on that note, we'll Thanks. leave it there for everyone. And we promise to be back soon because I yes. have a feeling there's gonna be more to talk about very soon. So, all right, for now, bye everyone. Bye guys.